Well, I didn't do an unboxing because I've already worn them a couple days. But I got some Predator whiskey boots. Cheers. You could see these over here, my Predator Orange. Figured it was probably a good idea to compare them. I might even do another video specifically just focused on these two leathers. Obviously, Predator Orange you can still buy. As far as I know, it's still kind of a standard at NYX. This was a limited run. It's gone, sold out. But useful to see a comparison. Did something, well, a couple of things I've never done before. So, 8 inch boot. Kind of pull them up here. Big change. That's a Munson toe. This is a Thurman 55 last. So, quite a bit bigger toe. Wider toe than your 55. It feels honestly very similar to the 67. I would say the Thurman actually might have a little more toe room over there. And, you know, I could even show you kind of a side by side here. Get these back from the camera a little bit. It's kind of tough when they're not centered, but you can see they're both kind of a, a wider toe. So, anyway, the pinky toe, little toe, whatever you call it. Uh, possibly a little more room, I think. I would say probably a little more room. And then, for whatever reason, the big toe, I don't think even has more room than the 67. It still touches my big toe. I wouldn't say it pushes, per se, maybe a little bit. I mean, it's nothing like I used to, you saw my videos a long time ago at the H&W, and I'm kind of critical of that. It's not like that. You can see it's, you know, it's pretty straight. I kind of lined that up there doesn't curve in too much, but my toes definitely, my big toes definitely touching the side here. Two days in, you know, I, you don't even have a sense of what it's going to feel like after it starts to break in more, but uh, it feels a lot like the 67. I've worn the 67s today. I, I just took these off actually for the video, but uh, I was kind of thinking on day, two, maybe day two, that this Thurman 55 was more comfortable and then I wore the 67s today and now I'm kind of thinking the 67 is more comfortable. I don't know. It's they're they're close. Uh, the 55 I've never really liked. I had 11 D's for the whites. Few pairs. They're all various stages of too tight. Sold all of them. Then I bought another pair of whites in 11 and a half D late last year. It fits, but it feels a little long. But at the same time, a little loose. Not well. I guess a little loose when I wear my thin socks that I prefer to wear. So I've been wearing them with sort of a medium sock. I, I don't know, they just don't feel, they don't feel right, whereas this feels more right. This feels more like a 67. Very comfortable. I did some other crazy stuff with this. So I said already eight inch, obviously it's Predator Whiskey, but then you can see this heel is not like what you'd expect at all. I was able to talk with a Nix employee and they can modify the order and they are able to change this to uh, basically a Packer heel. So. I was kind of going for wanting a Packer look. This, I wouldn't say it's a Packer boot per se, but as a Packer heel. Uh, mainly I say that because the this heel counter is still kind of a logger heel counter going all the way forward and even overlapping a little bit. Uh, to me, the Packer heel counter is a little bit shorter. Like on the, I guess I need to do a video on them, but my off-road Packers, as I call them, those ready-to-ship pair. But this Packer heel is obviously quite a bit different than a dogger and I'll pull these up to kind of show you what I mean. So these are both classic stacks. This is a dogger, this is a packer and you can see the angle is really aggressive. So it's like a super dogger almost, like the uber dogger and then obviously the heel cap is completely different. Uh, you can see it's actually after just two days it has quite a bit of wear honestly. The heel cap is a softer rubber, this is Vibram used to say oil resistant or something here and you can see the this whatever texture is deeper up to about here and then it's shallower here for you know more durability but I mean a lot of them have broken off be interesting to see how it does long term 
but these are easy enough to get replaced even by a cobbler. And then this is obviously a quabog. So the smaller heel is actually kind of different feeling. You initially it kind of feels, I don't know, on carpet, it almost felt when I stepped like I almost wanted to roll backwards, which I was kind of like, ooh, this is weird. But I think it was just kind of like uh, getting used to it. And then out on like cement, walking around, like walking the dog. Uh, I even went off road through a park near me, you know, through dirt and it's not really mud mud, but like soft, softer dirt. It hasn't rained in like a week. So it's starting to dry up and it's been warmer, but uh, it, it works fine. I was worried it would just, cause it's like a smaller spot with all my weight on it. It would kind of really dig down into the mud. It doesn't. And a benefit of, I should have said it, 269 V room here, Western. This I really wanted to do, well, I should just be clear, I really want to do a half sole V-bar, but they couldn't do a V-bar half sole in the Thurman 55 in 11E. They said it's not big enough, so that was kind of, I guess, a bummer, but in, in hindsight, I actually think I like this more. I was always really wanting to do a 269 with a, a thick stack, because it has kind of that cowboy look with just a thin little stripe. You see some of this on old Knicks. They, used, they did more 269s, but I think it matches, too. So they both have kind of these lines, right? You see all these lines going down the heel and you see all the lines going down the sole. And it's kind of cool, it gets a little bit of mud on them. You just wipe it off real quickly with a paper towel, wet paper towel, like after I got back from walking the dog and I can walk around the house with no mud. Whereas, you know, I think of something like the, the V100, it just picks up tons of dirt. Obviously it has its purpose, but it's uh, more work to clean it. So yeah, Packer, I guess it's a packer stack technically because it's six layers. I think the classic stack is normally five, except for that pair, which, you know, I'm not really sure what took place. You know, I mentioned that in my other video, but uh, six layers, thinner heel cap. So the packer heel cap, cowboy heel cap is definitely thinner than a quabog, which is, and the quabog's thinner than like a V-bar or 430 heel cap. So the height of this heel, I should actually show you, is actually lower, funny enough, than than this one. I'm gonna get them back a little bit. Well, maybe not lower, it's about the same. In my mind, it's supposed to have been taller because this doesn't have a layer of sole going through it. But I guess that thin little layer from the 269 compensates for maybe the slight, thin, the slightly less thick, you know, uh, cowboy cap but yeah not the these are pretty tall boots but as far as heel but none of them are as tall as my classic stack v100 uh builder pros because those have the the v100 heel cap which is obviously a lot thicker with the tread or the waffle tread or whatever so i think this looks really cool i love how the 269 and i have this on one of my old mtos from last summer the uh, milled buck brown I did some videos on or some shorts on I guess uh, this is kind of cool how this works it's almost like it bulges down where it starts to thicken up and then with the Knicks really thick you know heel uh, sorry not heel uh, arch the leather arch I mean you can really see let me see if I can get that in the camera angle right but you would see kind of how it curves under there and I think this really kind of accentuates the the arch it just looks really neat and how the point, right? I don't know, I just like it. And it's super comfortable and it's not like, it's not durable. The The other pair I have is wearing just fine. It's kind of neat too, as the stitches all wear out, the little piece of thread just becomes kind of a little dot and it stays kind of in between those, sorry, I'm losing the camera, stays in between these little lines and it kind of like, I don't know, it looks good. So yeah, this is kind of a weird build where it's a wide ass toe of a Thurman with a really hardcore narrow cowboy heel. Uh, I heard there was someone else looking for this. I feel like it was on, I think I was on Reddit, I think I saw. Some other guy was asking, how can I configure a Packer with a Thurman 55. A lot of guys do Packers and just the 55, obviously, who don't want to go pointed like the two, or the 5322, two, two, or I think that's what it is, 5332. Uh, and I guess there's a few of us who want kind of this weird build 
where you got some you got some cowboy vibes but also some kind of p and w vibes with the with the big toe yeah very happy with it uh what else got a cool sticker that i've never got before it's this i'll throw a photo up i took i put it on my keys it's a square sticker that says nix in kind of a different font I thought that was kind of neat. I hadn't seen that one before. All the other ones I've had were always like a boot or something like that. Or the I have that one that had the hammer, I think. I got that last summer. That was kind of neat. Uh, I like the stickers. They should sell them. I want to have one of each. Check this out. This is like a big, I think, argument in this space to do the pull tab or not. I like pull tabs, but I definitely would agree no pull tab is way cleaner. I mean, look at both of these boots. This, obviously, I was kind of going for some of that prospector vibe, which obviously doesn't have the pull loop because it's a single piece. But it's just such a clean, clean boot. And then even with an 8-inch, I mean, that just looks great. The only thing I could think that could make this better, and you know, that might scare people with this idea, is they should offer an 8-inch single-piece backstay. I think people would want it, and I feel like it wouldn't be that hard to do. Uh, maybe you don't even need to buy a, a die. You could just hand cut it or something. I heard they're doing 7-inch. Make it a 7-inch sing single-piece backstay. Good enough. I want a 7-inch boot anyway because it's sort of splitting the difference. 6 is cool. But 8 definitely has kind of a more, I don't know, balanced, it just looks, I don't know, it kind of feels like it looks more proper. And you get a little more arch, or uh, sorry, uh, ankle support. And I think 7 might be kind of still kind of casual with the 6 vibe, but a little more of that support. This leather is very interesting. So when I got it, again, I had it took a few just cell phone pictures. I'll maybe throw them up now if I hadn't earlier. It, you know... Predator leather seems like it kind of looks all scuffed up, but what I've found with this pair is it's darkened quite a bit. So, you know, going over here to my, my orange pair, uh, I just brush it after each wear, like I do all my boots, and it seems like it's kind of darkened and, I don't know, the, the higher wear spots. So, let me bring this guy back up here. So, you know, the, the creases and stuff will show a little bit of lightening. And then I think, yeah, so you see that more on this side where it kind of rubs against, where it's creased and then rubs against your pants. That will be a little bit lighter, but generally it feels like it's darkened up a little bit. And I had seen that before with other people's pairs. And if you put any conditioner, it definitely darkens up. I, I will not. I, I don't even know if I'll even do Venetian shoe cream on these because all the videos, or sorry, all the pictures I've seen, you put some conditioner on these and they get super dark. Uh, these were already darker kind of than I had imagined them to be from the pictures. So still love this color. I love the orange, but I am mean, trying to keep some of that, that pop of, you know, what I don't want to call it a uh, pull up because it's weird with predator. It's almost like the thick wax is cracking or something. And then the lightness comes through. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is these were, you know, when I got them had more of this look of the predator whiskey and now this Predator Whiskey, I think it was starting to do the same. Currently, it's kind of in transition. So it definitely had a lot more whiter and scratchier looked up, like kind of worn down looking almost on the toe when I got them new. And there's some light, like not scratches per se, but just some lighting areas. The heels actually have a bit of it still. And it seems like after the first brush, maybe it started to dissipate and darken. And then after the second brush, because I've worn them two days, I didn't wear them today, I wore them yesterday and the day before. Uh, they're already starting to kind of, I guess, darken and unify in color. And yes, they're similar, but they're actually a bit different. I don't know how well that comes out in the video. Uh, again, maybe I should just do a whole other video talking about this. But, you know, as you'd imagine, these have that orange undertone, these don't. I, my mind had thought, well, these are like more of a brown, predator brown, but, I don't even know if it's that. It's almost like the the best way I could describe it, and you could see it on the inside a little bit. I don't know if this will come out well in the camera here. But if you guys have ever seen Walnut Rough Out from NYX, the Seidel leather, 
it almost, the inside of these has that kind of that walnut rough out look. The outside definitely doesn't look walnut. Walnut's a lot darker in my opinion. But it, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's not a brown brown. It's not a medium brown. It's definitely not a tan. But it's, maybe that's what, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's whiskey. Is that what it is? I don't know. I feel like Predator Orange might match whiskey better, but it's a good color though. And I love the Predators because they kind of just have all this, I don't know, nuance was something. Some guy was talking about minutia. Maybe I'll use that word just to trigger him. Maybe I'll talk about how Predator whiskey leather has minutia. It's great leather though. And this heel is freaking rad, man. Look at that. You just feel good wearing that. I feel like a cowboy, even though I'm far from it. Uh, anyway. So yeah, there it is. Newest acquisition. 11E, like my 67s. It's good size. Uh, I could maybe post a comparison of the footbeds, but I actually did one of both Thurmans. The fit on this actually seems to be almost identical to the Thurman Northwest that I owned last year. I sold it after a few months or in the fall, I think, and I owned it kind of through late or summer-ish. Uh, I don't know. They just, something, something that was flat last and I, they just didn't do it for me. But the fit was always good. I remember thinking how comfortable they were. And they had even had a soft toe. This is a elastic toe I didn't mention. But uh, this kind of gives me that same comfort, but with the arch that I like a lot for the aesthetic, because, you know, I'll admit I'm a little shallow there, but I've also just gotten used to the comfort of it. And now when I wear a boot that doesn't have an arch like this, they kind of feel unsupportive and strange. I think I would eventually get used to it again, but I just prefer it. So I think the Thurman 55 is, is the way to go if you're looking at the Thurmans, unless you really can't handle an arch. And I would definitely recommend the 3055 over the regular 55 if you have, you know, toe, toe splay type issues or whatever, banana feet. And, you know, honestly, even when you look down on them, they don't look too ridiculous. They just kind of look like a little bit of a wider boot. They don't look like, uh, at least in my size, I guess, if you have a super wide Thurman, it might look strange. Or a shorter foot, I don't know. Yeah, actually. Cheers, officially.